Chapter 22 What Will Become of Our Body at the Resurrection When we are resurrected, what will become of our body? Jesus said, Matthew chapter 22, verse 30. At the resurrection, people will neither marry nor be given in marriage. They will be like the angels in heaven. We have learned that we were the sons of God, the spiritual beings like the angels, before we were born into the sinful world. Even Christ, who pre-existed as the Creator, was born as a man. He departed this life by dying on the cross and again became the ruler of the whole universe. How much more can the holy people of heaven be born as human beings and restored to their previous state by rising from the dead owing to the grace of Christ? The life of Jesus, both before and after his life on earth, clearly shows our life before and after this life. Jesus pre-existed as a spiritual being from the beginning of time. He once wore the robe of flesh as he was born through the body of Mary. However, when he died on the cross, his spirit separated from his body and continued to live, awaiting the morning of his resurrection. The pre-existing spirit of Jesus never died. Likewise, when we die, our spirit will be separated from our body and will rest in paradise until the time of our resurrection. Before we came to this sinful world, we lived happily as spirits before the glorious throne of Jesus. By committing sin, however, we came into this sinful world and were born of the flesh. Losing the ability to fly freely, we are living the life of a prisoner. By studying Jesus' life before and after his earthly life, we can understand ours because Jesus is just like us in spirit and in body. If we were not like him, we would not be able to go to heaven. The difference between Jesus and us is that he is God and we are his children. Just like him, our spirit is immutable. Then was Jesus resurrected as the immutable being that he had been long before coming into this world? Or was he resurrected with a body as a souvenir of this world. If he had not returned to his original state of being, he would not be immutable. Christ, the Son of God, is always the same. If he were changeable, even just a little bit, he would not be immortal. It is nearly impossible to estimate the age of the universe. Christ, who has the power to create the infinite universe, came into this world in the flesh. Some say that Jesus returned to heaven in his body of flesh or with his divine nature changed. Such people show that they do not understand the divinity of Jesus Christ. After the resurrection, Jesus appeared to his disciples in bodily form so that they might believe in his resurrection. Christ appeared as a man like one of us. On the road to Damascus, he appeared to Saul as an overpowering light brighter than the noonday sun. When he appeared to the Apostle John on the island of Patmos, his eyes were like blazing fire, his feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, and out of his mouth came a sharp double-edged sword. His face was like the sun shining in all its brilliance. Like this, Jesus sometimes revealed himself in an awesome appearance. So the Apostle Paul said, He is the image of the invisible God. Thus, the resurrection of Jesus Christ means his being restored to his glorious image as God himself, which no one can see. When Christ came into this world, he put on flesh through Mary. And when he departed, he took off the robe of flesh and was resurrected into the Godhead. Some may ask, if Jesus' resurrection means his restoration to the original state, what about his body? In studying this matter, we should first understand the mighty power of the Creator. When the Lord appeared to Abraham in physical form, not in a vision, Abraham served God some curds, milk, and a tender calf dish. Then God and two angels who appeared as men ate the food and left. It was neither a vision nor a revelation that Abraham saw. God is spirit, not flesh. In the power of the Creator, the invisible God made himself visible to Abraham. God can create something out of nothing and change something into nothing. Jesus' body, 
at the time of his resurrection is preserved by his power. For all that, we do not deny the bodily resurrection of Jesus. We just testify to the power of Jesus' resurrection. Like Jesus, we took off our angelic garments and put on flesh through women when we came to the sinful world because of our sin committed in heaven. However, if we are saved from this sinful world by the grace of Christ, even though our body dies, our spirit will take off our robe of flesh and wear the robe of Christ and rest in the heavenly paradise temporarily. And when Jesus comes, we will also participate in the resurrection of the body. Just as God appeared to Abraham in flesh, we will be able to put on flesh or take it off. It is true that there will be the resurrection of our body. Our flesh and blood will be transformed into a perfect body, which is the angelic robe. Some think that marriage life and family system on this earth will continue into the kingdom of heaven. However, such a system does not exist in heaven. If the earthly family system continued to exist in heaven, Jesus, who is our example, would have the same family that he had on earth. Mary would be his mother, and his physical brothers would be his own brothers in heaven too. However, Jesus did not call them his mother and brothers even on this earth. When they came to see him, he said, Luke chapter 8, verse 19, My mother and brothers are those who hear God's word and put it into practice. In regard to an ordinary family, he said, Matthew chapter 10, verse 35, For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. He also said, Matthew chapter 23, verse 9, And do not call anyone on earth father, for you have one father, and he is in heaven. And the Apostle Paul said, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 8, Now to the unmarried and the widows I say, it is good for them to stay unmarried as I am. If earthly marriage continued in heaven, how lonely would single people be in the everlasting kingdom? If it were, it would be better to marry during this life. However, there is no marriage or family system in heaven. All of us are the sons of God like angels, and among ourselves we have brotherhood and friendship. In this world, we are children or parents according to the flesh and blood. But such a relationship does not exist after this life. We will all be equal and fair in our judgment. In our earthly life, we feel happy if our family members are saved. But actually, we do not clearly know who our enemies are and who our benefactors are among our family members until we go to heaven. Of course, we have a responsibility for the salvation of our family while we live in this world. However, in the kingdom of heaven, we will not feel great sorrow because our family members are not saved, nor will we feel less sorrow because other people are not saved. At the judgment, no one will feel sorry for any other person, because the unforgivable sin he or she committed before being born into the world will be laid bare. Rather, all the saved will praise and thank God who judges all righteously. If we were to feel sad for our unsaved relatives in heaven, where we cannot hide our conscience, would we be able to praise God who judges each person according to his deeds? If we grieve over our unsaved parents or children, we will become grumblers against God who judges justly. And if we have any complaints against God, we will not be able to praise God joyfully and conscientiously. In conclusion, our resurrection does not mean a resurrection of flesh and blood, but a restoration to our original state as angels. Our body will be perfectly changed. So far, we have studied the principles of the soul through many verses to confirm its fundamentals. And I, the author, hope that all you readers will receive the gospel of Jesus Christ and be cleansed by his blood shed on the cross and return to the heavenly country you left. Amen.